Okay, so the next thing we're going to do here is to um, assemble the uh, diode board. Uh, so we're going to get these two bridges that are supplied with your kit, get this board, and put these things in. There is um, no way to uh, put these things in wrong way, so don't worry about that. Just uh, fit in what works from the other sides, the unmarked side. Okay, one and two. These bridges are connected in parallel to uh, enable load sharing in a better way. Okay, so this how it looks. Don't bend this uh, these legs just yet. Just. Um, solder to the board. You might want to use the um, uh, high power soldering gun again uh, for this one which is what we're gonna do. So just a second here. So these are now soldered in. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is to reinforce some of the uh, connections here. So this is a regular PCB board and it's not very big and it needs to carry the full input current uh, to the charger which is um, 50 amps on on the 240 line uh, which means that the peak current is probably around 70 amps and that's the peak current that it needs to handle uh, the weakest part of this board is the AC connection between these two uh, actually the negative connection between these two pins and this is the one that you would want to reinforce. The other way to reinforce it, so one way is to just put a uh, bridge here. Um, gauge 12 copper wire um, works well. The other way to reinforce this connection is to use this second board just like that and to put it on, put it on top like this and effectively uh, just make another parallel connection. Um, so that spreads the load into parts and allows you to um, not put any bridges in. The downside of this is that the connection from this board to the power board will become a little bit more complicated. So what are we going to do here now is we're going to just put a bridge between these two um, uh, taps here. Okay, so that's done. This is how it would look if you do that. Okay. So now it's ready. Now you can, if you use that method, you can cut all the legs down. Okay, so this is your board prepared. Next thing is to connect this board to the power board that we just built. Uh, the way you do it, again, there are more than one way to do it, as usual. So one way is to just uh, connect it to um, uh, via soldering. And again, you can use gauge 8 or gauge 10, they're copper, and just put them into these pads here, sticking out, and they would be soldered together to the uh, power board in here. They're matching connections here. So if you can see, that's how it would go, one under another. Another way, which is a little bit more um, friendly to assembly and disassembly, is to use some standoffs. A roughly three quarter inch standoffs uh, would be the ones that you would want to use between these two. And this is what we're gonna do here as well. So let's get some standoffs. So we're gonna use this aluminum uh, standoffs. These are female to female. Uh, so you need to put a bolt on each side and we're going to use this brass bolt here, 1032 and uh, a very thin washer. So this goes through the large hole here and the standoff screws on that like this. Now we're going to secure the standoff and the bolt here. So we might want to use uh, a little force.
just like that. And another one. Try to use um, the washers that are as thin as possible. And you'll see why in a second. Okay, so that's the second one. Top. Okay, so this is your board. Now, when you uh, put your main board on top of this little board here, you will see that things are aligned perfectly well on this side. So let's uh, make it such that you can see it. Okay, so this is the alignment there. Um, there is some spacing between the standoff and the board here. Uh, what you can do is to put washers uh, under the standoff here and also washers over the standoff so that you can match the, uh, uh, the spacing. The spacing appeared because we used the washers between the IGBT and the power board here, remember? Uh, so that's the main reason. Normally there wouldn't be as much spacing. So let's put some, uh, some washers under these standoffs. We're gonna use copper washers like this. Here. Okay, so copper washers are in. Now you want to use smaller washers here and here on top of the standoffs before we screw in the uh, main board. So lower gently. Okay, not to disturb the washers. And then we're gonna use the same brass bolts as before and uh, this time we are also going to use some lock washers okay so the lock washer goes in oops a lock washer goes in regular washer goes in and this assembly gets screwed onto the board there. Okay, careful not to disturb too much. Second one, do the same thing. One and two and screwing it on top here. Just like that. Okay. Don't apply too much force just yet. Um, and actually, we've now committed our first mistake. And this is what it is. It's uh, about orientation of the uh, diode board, of the bridge board. It just has two connections to the uh, power board. So you can actually put it in the wrong way. And that's what we just did. Put it in the wrong way. It actually goes in reverse. So you want to pay attention to that. And the way you do it is uh, two things. One, AC connections um, naturally has have to face outside. Otherwise, it's very difficult to connect AC line. And also you have the markings here. Plus and minus and plus and minus. So be careful not to uh, mess up those connections. Okay, take two. Ooh. So pretty. Okay, looks much better now. Um, don't 
don't put all the force uh, just yet onto these uh, screws because you might need to disassemble it later. Okay, here's how it looks. Okay. These are the connections, this is everything. So now what we need to do is we need to connect the um, AC wiring to, uh, uh, to these little pads. What we're gonna use is um, about 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches of uh, gauge six or gauge eight wire. Uh, these are some high power connections, so we need to make sure they're, um, they're good and the wire is thick enough. Um, both to carry the current by itself, but also um, take the heat off the PCB. So for this, uh, we use some gauge six wire and some lugs and give them good beating. It's a good idea to isolate uh, as much as you can, so put some heat shrink tubing on it. On the second one, and we'll be ready to connect these things in a second. Before you mount these wires, might not be a bad idea to uh, bend the lugs just like that so that you have more space to work with. If you look at the uh, PCB, at the um, driver, um, at the uh, bridge board PCB, you will see that you cannot actually mount um, the lugs this way because they might short out the uh, one of the conductors here. So you need to mount them this way and there will be inductors in the charger enclosure on this side so you don't want to interfere with those. So that's why you would bend to get the wire out of the way of the future components and mount it like this and this here. Actually what we're going to use here is a brass, um, brass bolt copper washer. It goes in like this from the bottom of the board. Then the wire goes on top of it, the lug. And then we're going to use the uh, lock nut with nylon lock on this board here so that it does not unscrew itself later. And we're going to fasten the whole assembly right now. Hopefully that's going to sit tight. Okay, so we got some uh, some part of the thread going into the nylon, which is good. And now I'm going to do the second one just like that. So we're going to use a copper washer, brass bolt, second line, AC conductor and the, um, the lock nuts. A little bit hard to work with, but that's okay. It's much easier than some of the other sequences of assembly. ourselves an AC connection that is properly wired all the way through. Okay, the next thing we might want to do is start preparing for wiring this board to the inductors and so forth. Um, so what we use here at EMW when we assemble these things, uh, we actually use some standoffs to um, prepare for mounting the inductors and so forth. So we use standoffs that look like this. That's again a brass standoff that we use for inductors. So uh, this one would go in here and again we would use a uh, lock nut with nylon just like this one in here so that it does not 
unscrew itself. And this is the connector that will be used for the inductor. We have another one just like that. And we have a couple of wires to uh, go in here. So we're gonna use similar standoffs there as well. So the standoffs are now in and we are going to fasten them to the board. Okay, not too much force. Both not to strip the board and also actually not to break the standoff, which we did a couple of times. All right, so this looks good now. Let's look at what we've done. Okay, we put two standoffs on the uh, right AGBT, right to, my, uh, right to me. This is the Buck AGBT. That's also um, referred to in the manual as output AGBT. So the two standoffs are here. On the PFC, the only standoff we use is um, on the top of the AGBT from me. This will be uh, going to the inductor. Also, we put these two inductor pickups here. So the way it's going to work is the following. The um, PFC inductor will be connected between these two pickups this and this. The um, output inductor will be connected between this and this pickup and um, this middle um, standoff will be used as a uh, negative battery connection. It will go right outside. Then one another, the only other connection that we are going to make and we're just going to solder the wire to this uh, particular uh, pad here is going to be the output um, off the charger, the positive output of the charger. We are going to use gauge 8 wire, um, red wire here, and black wire for the negative so that uh, they're not getting mixed up. So let's do this right now. Okay, so uh, while we were at it, we also connected the uh, negative output wire, this black wire. So this is a red wire that we just talked about. Uh, now might be a good time to bring all these wires together and um, maybe uh, bundle them with a zip tie like this so that they're uh, out of the way and also not uh, confusing you as you go further. Okay, just like that in the middle of the board. The way this is going to go outside is the enclosure is going to have a grill here and these wires will go through the grill out um, so this entire board uh, will be placed on the uh, heat sink and the wires will go through the uh, grill okay the next thing that we are going to do to this board and the last thing is to uh, have the uh, terminals mounted onto these pads here that would hold the driver board. This is the driver board that we will need to uh, place onto the power board in this orientation. So there are some 90 degree male connectors that go into these pads here and they will plug into the board just like that. Okay, so the best way to do it is actually to put the um, male connectors in first and solder them together, then put the female connectors on them and then insert the whole assembly into the power board and solder from the other side. This is exactly what we're gonna do.